Have you ever been really excited about starting a project only to get about five seconds in and become completely overwhelmed by what you were planning on doing and so instead you decided to do some procrastinating? <laughs> for example, for me, rather than tackling the absolute spaghetti diagram of the wrap corset pieces, I decided to sew myself three separate aprons that I love to wear now. I nearly completed knitting an entire new sweater. I decided to take up some new crafts like embroidery for the first time, as well as make my first ever quilt, and now I want to quilt everything. <laughs> I decided enough was enough though, and it was actually finally time for me to start working on this morning corset, wrap corset, whatever you want to call it. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this, this is part of my 1890s loungewear that I want to do. I talked a little bit about the casual research I did into 1890s loungewear. You all had some amazing discussion for me in the comments about whether or not it would be common to wear a type of corset underneath 1890s morning wear or lounge wear, I think the discussion kind of came to, it's a personal preference and if a bra or some sort of supportive thing is something that I wear typically when I like to wear my lounge clothes or my relaxing clothes, then it would logically make sense for me to wear something similar for my 1890s lounge wear. And since I do like to wear like a very comfortable sports bra when I'm relaxing in my modern day clothes, I thought it would be the most appropriate thing for me to make this morning corset for my 1890s lounge wear. Now something that I find is pretty fun about it is that um, the morning corset I think it's called the morning corset or at least from the resource that I found is because it was described as something to wear while you are spending your morning relaxing or sitting down to have some support but nothing that is really restrictive. The actual name of the corset, I don't know if this is the magazine it first appeared in, it's the it's Der Bazaar, it's called the Faulenza. And the best way that I think that I can translate this word is couch potato. So this is the couch potato corset which is just perfect, I think, for the exact use case that I want to use this corset for. I also want to say, I, while I do read and understand German, I got a huge amount of help from someone named Zeitenzauberin, who did a blog post on making this corset herself. I got so much help because a lot of the sewing terms are not only very different for me, but they're also from a much older time. So that post actually helped a lot in helping me understand how to actually construct this corset. I'll leave a link down below to the original article that is free for anyone to see but it is in German and then I'll leave a link to her post where she did some translation of the instructions and things so maybe if you want to do something similar you can also use those resources to make your own version of this. The biggest hurdle for me in just getting this project started was when I looked at the pattern page and it just looked like someone threw spaghetti at the wall. It seemed very difficult for me to understand and just the idea of trying to make sure a corset fits and probably having to do multiple mock-ups and having to print out pieces of paper and tape them together and cut them out. That was so much effort that I just didn't want to start. So I actually decided to take a bit of advice from Morgan Donner and one of her videos where instead of doing the cutting out and taping together paper method of patterns to use a projector and a rotary cutting board, which is absolutely fantastic. I also want to say thank you so much to my patrons because your support allowed me to kind of invest in getting that so that I can actually get over the hurdle of getting this project started. A huge thank you to my patrons. Um, I always really appreciate both just the camaraderie that I have there as well as the support to allow me to do things like have that projector set up and a rotary cutting mat so that I can actually finally get something like this. This is that was really intimidating and overwhelming to me started. I of course didn't listen and I didn't get the ceiling mount so we built our own little wood ceiling mount for our projector but it does work. It works actually really well. Then it was time for me to actually get started in cutting out my pieces. The first time that I cut out the first mock-up I did try to follow the instructions of scaling it properly. There's like documents you can use to make sure that you know the zoom that you have matches exactly the measurements that you want but I found when I did that it just seemed like the pattern pieces were not quite the right size. So <laughs> instead of using that zoom percentage I thought why don't I just lay down on the ground and let the projector project on me and see how big the corset pieces are on my body. Maybe that will give me a good indication of how big I need to cut out these pieces to make my corset mock-up. After deciding the exact size that I wanted to try to make the first mock-up version of this corset, I decided to use some of my muslin fabric and cut it out. This pattern is drawn without seam allowance, so I wanted to make sure that I had these stitching lines marked, so I just used some marking chalk to draw those out before using my rotary cutter and my cutting mat to cut out the pieces, which was really, really nice. Because all it takes for me to make one of these mock-ups is to turn on my projector, grab my supplies, 
and just start cutting and I don't have to worry about warping anything by picking up the fabric and trying to cut it with scissors. It just feels so much easier to get started and to do some trial and error. And so I really appreciate having this method to be able to kind of iterate on my different mock-ups much quicker. I felt pretty lucky because all the pieces that were required for this particular corset were marked in solid lines, so it was pretty easy for me to follow and there was a nice itemized list of all the pieces that I needed. So I just checked them off my list as I cut each of the pieces out. I stitched all the pieces together as the instructions said, even though the instructions were maybe a little bit vague, so I definitely used Sight and Sullivan's blog post as a bit of a help and guide. I didn't do it exactly correct, like the gores are not done correctly at all. I only wanted to see if the size that I picked was relatively okay or if I needed to make any changes before I spent too long piecing this corset together. As a bit of a side note, something that I find really fun about this particular project is it's the first full project that I'll be using my Wilcox & Gibbs sewing machine. I do have a bit of a video on the sewing machine if you're interested in some more of the details, but the sewing machine head is from about 1894 or 1895, and to be constructing an 1893 corset on this just kind of makes my heart sing. It just makes me very happy. Once all the pieces were quickly stitched together, I didn't add any boning or anything like that. I just wanted to see if the general size was okay. I don't know if you can tell, but this is quite baggy on me, and even if I pull it as tight as possible, the pieces in the back are kind of crossing over each other. So this is definitely a few sizes too large. So while I'm happy to see the first corset ever on me that I personally stitched, it is quite loose. And while this is supposed to be a relaxed corset, I don't think it would do any kind of support if it were really this size. So I went back to the drawing board and did my next mock-up. To kind of decide how much smaller to go on the second version of the mock-up, I used my first version as a bit of a guide. I sized down the PDF on my computer and held up the relevant pieces for size reference just to see how much smaller exactly I'm going to be making these pieces. I also decided to lay down one more time and just check the size of the pieces on my body once again. It seemed like maybe the corset was a bit short, and so not going by length but by width of the pieces would give me a little bit better idea of if the size was correct. Once I decided on the new size that I wanted to try to make the second mock-up, I once again marked out the stitching lines and then cut out all the pieces that I needed. I then stitched together all the pieces very roughly but pin the sides together and the front together to allow me the ability to make any changes should I need to. I think you can see here that it is once again still a little bit too wide for me, a little bit too large, so I decided to repin it a little bit tighter. I am glad that I didn't sew it up completely and allowed myself a little bit of room to do some repinning and I pinned it slightly smaller. With that version that I had where I pinned it slightly smaller, I then once again held it up to the PDF projection on my fabric to kind of see how much smaller I needed to make that projection to kind of fit me a little bit better. I once again, this is a repeat from before, marked out all my sewing lines, cut out all the pieces, and sewed it together. I think we're now on mock-up number three, and I took the time to actually sew all the pieces together as well as add the tie strings to really see how this version of the corset fits. And I think width-wise, especially in the waist, it fits well. However, it is very loose around my bust area and around the hips. And I also think that it is quite short. Something that was also mentioned in the blog post that I referenced is that Sight & Selwyn also found this corset to be quite short-waisted. And so I decided to mark up a few lines on my corset, like the center front line, because I was kind of changing how much overlap I had in my pieces each time. So I wanted to make that a little bit more standard. And then I marked out where my waistline would be so that I could add a few inches there and make it actually be a somewhat supportive garment. I don't know how much of an accurate method this is to adding length to something that you've created and that is cutting it at the waistline and then adding some extra fabric, pinning it back in place and trying it on and seeing if that's the right size. But that's the method that I decided to use for this corset. After fiddling around a little bit with the extra amount of fabric that I added at the waist, tucking and pinching away a little bit of the extra fabric that I had around the bust and the hips, 
I decided that I was actually pretty happy with this version of the corset. Does this technically count as mock-up number four? I'm not sure because it's mock-up number three, cut in half, length added, and then where I had pinched out that extra fabric in the gores, I unpicked all of that, trimmed the gores, and then re-sewed it together. So I guess, I don't know, I, maybe I feel a little bit comfortable <laughs> calling this mock-up number four. And at this point, I was happy to move on to maybe spending a little bit more time in being more meticulous in creating my next mock-up. So mock-up number five, and I'm gonna use slightly thicker fabric and do boning this time to really see how the fit is. For this next mock-up, I wanted to make sure that I couldn't really get it wrong in terms of what my pattern pieces look like. So I actually tore apart or picked apart and cut apart the last mock-up that I made in order to use the individual pieces to use as my pattern for my final mock-up. So I kind of destroyed my last mock-up, but I'm glad that I did it this way because it felt like I could get the best fit on my final mock-up. The fabric that I used for this fifth mock-up Online it said it was a cotton drill, which I thought would be thick enough for this, and I believe it's actually what the pattern originally calls for, but it's a very interesting texture. It's smooth on top, but almost like a fleece on the inside. So it's, it feels very warm when I wear this corset, but it didn't feel quite as stiff as the cotton cotille that I ended up buying for the finished version of this corset. Once again, I used my rotary cutter to cut out all of my pieces, and rather than marking out my stitch lines in chalk on this one, I wanted to try out thread marking instead. Now, I'm not much of a hand sewer, but I will say that doing thread marking was a really, really cool concept to me because I used hand stitching to mark out my stitching lines for my machine, and I'm glad that I tried it out and I learned how to do it in the end, I decided not to do thread marking to mark out all of my stitch lines. However, there's one spot where you do have to put in a dart and that I did end up thread marking and I thought that that was very, very helpful to have the thread marking done. On this fifth and final mock-up, I also decided to actually do the gores in the proper way before I was just sewing them on as easily and as quickly as I could, but this time I wanted to learn how to do the technique right and practice it on this last mock-up before I did it on the final corset. I will leave a link down in the description below to the video that I used from Opus LNA, which I thought was really, really helpful to learn how to do this properly, and I'm actually really happy with how my gores all turned out. I really hope you don't mind some more gratuitous shots of me sewing my gores with my Wilcox and Gibbs sewing machine. I absolutely love this machine and I could probably go on talking about it for a very, very long time. But one of the unique things about it is that it's actually a chain stitch machine. So it's not a lock stitch machine, which means that it has some unique properties in the way that it sews, including that you only need one thread when you're sewing with this machine. Something else that I really love about this sewing machine is that it actually has an automatic tensioner so you never have to set the tension. The machine will automatically use the absolutely perfect tension for whatever you're sewing. And I did have to rebuild this machine from various parts and I decided to rebuild it as a treadle machine, which I'm very happy with and I really enjoy using. I find it to be actually a very soothing machine to work with. The last step for my last mock-up was to add the boning, and I'm really glad that I tried it out on the mock-up first because after looking at the diagrams again, it turns out I placed them in the wrong locations. So I had to unpick everything and redo it. The corset uses a combination of steel bones in the center front, and everything else is baleen, or for me, imitation baleen. This next part, I have to say, is a little bit of a sad story. I found some really nice filler footage to put in here for you all because unfortunately, one of my memory cards completely corrupted. So the rest of me making the last markup, plus the whole entire beginning portion of me making my final corset, including cutting everything out and thread marking and sewing in my gores, was all lost, unfortunately. The same day that I lost the footage, I was then stung by a wasp, and then I dropped my corset in mud. <laughs> that was not my best day, but I found a way to move forward, 
and I'll show you how my last mock-up turned out before I move on to the footage that I was able to save and re record for the finished corset. With this last mock-up, I was actually very surprised at how well it fit and how comfortable it feels. You can see that I am taking out some of the pins that I had originally placed after I finished this last mock-up because I needed to take even more width out of the bust and the hip area. I guess I'm a little bit more rectangular than the pattern originally assumed and I pinched out that excess and transferred that into the pattern pieces that I had cut out from my fourth mock-up in order to be able to use those pattern pieces for my finished corset. While I did manage to lose most of the footage of me making my finished corset, I did manage to save the absolute most important footage of all, which is, of course, my dog falling asleep to the beautiful rhythmic sound of the treadle sewing machine. One of the other pieces of footage I managed to save was the felling process that I did. My lines aren't particularly even, but I ended up doing machine felling on this corset for where the gores are, and I think it actually turned out quite nicely. And I have to say, my machine is such a beast to go through so many layers of cotton cotille with absolute ease. After dropping my corset in the mud and then giving it a nice wash, a few days later, I managed to get a nice black mark on it. I, I don't know where it came from, but I then had to wash my corset again um, after soaking it in some cleaner. And to make myself feel a little bit better, I attempted to take some very cinematic shots of me <laughs> washing and then drying my corset outside. Thankfully, after two or three washes, the corset was rid of all of the chalk marks that I ended up using, the mud that it fell in, and the mark that it got on it from who knows where, and all I had to do was give it a nice iron before I could continue on the finishing parts of my final corset. At this point I have all the pieces of my corset sewn together, but I need to do some finishing steps before I add the boning, and that is to reinforce the points of the gores where they are the weakest. I already reinforced a few, but I will show you how I used a buttonhole stitch basically to hand stitch and hand reinforce the tips of the gores. After reinforcing the tips of the gores, I actually had to go to the boning as my next step, but my dog decided that I wasn't paying quite enough attention to her, and while I had my back turned for, I swear it was two seconds, she decided to jump up on my sewing machine table. I thought she might want to join me for some show sewing, so I had her on my lap for a little bit, but she decided that she didn't like that very much. For the finished version of this corset, I also decided to connect the middle parts slightly differently than how I did the mock-ups. I'm not sure though now, looking back on it, that this is the strongest method because it does rely on a seam to hold it together and that's taking a lot of pressure. So I don't know, the original instructions were basically to quilt the fronts together. I'm not exactly sure what that means. So that part still confuses me. I don't think I did that in the best way possible. Like I mentioned before, the center front bones are steel bones and I got that from a corset supply shop. I'll leave the link down below to the supply shops that I used for the different materials that I have. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I just was very curious where other people get their corset making supplies, so I'll let you know where I get mine. I'm not saying that what I used was the best, but it works pretty well for me and I was quite happy with it. The rest of the boning that is not the center front steel bones are supposed to be fishbine or baleen. Instead, I used the closest thing that I could find to a kind of plastic boning. I found it online, and once again, I'll include the link down below. I thought it was quite nice because I could actually sew through this very easily with my machine, which I think acts a little bit like baleen originally did, and it was nice because I don't have the straightest lines when I sew, so sometimes I was a little bit off and it didn't really make so much of a difference. <laughs> 
I used cotton twill tape for the boning channels. I was kind of debating on where the boning channels should be, whether they should be on the outside or the inside, but I followed Sight and Savala's example and I put my boning channels on the inside and I find it to be quite comfortable. This corset I don't think has quite as much boning as some other corsets of the same time, but I do feel like when I wear it, it gives me a great amount of support. I also, I know I mentioned this before, but I am just so amazed at how well this machine works because it's stitching through so many layers of such thick fabric. The machine is almost 130 years old and I have a little confession to make and that is the needle that I'm actually using to sew here is almost just as old. It's about 120 years old and it still works beautifully. It is a new needle, it's just it was new in 1912. This very last step I only did for my final corset. I didn't attempt it on any of my mock-ups because I didn't want to spend the time to and I wish I did looking back on it and that is actually adding a silk binding tape to the top edge and all the way around the corset to give it a nice finish and to cover the raw edge. I think it looks really beautiful, but man, was my stitching sloppy. So I really apologize for anyone who's cringing at how sloppy my binding is around the top and bottom edges of my corset. <laughs> I wanted to pause before I did the final reveal to kind of take you through the journey that it took for me to get to this point and all the mock-ups that I did. Starting with my first mock-up, which was definitely not the right size at all, but a good place to start. My second mock-up was a little bit better, but still definitely could use huge improvements on the size. And I made the third and fourth mock-up, which is now in pieces because I used the pieces in order to cut out my last mock-up and then my final corset. My final mock-up and the first one where I added some boning was made out of a thicker cotton material and actually is very comfortable, especially when I keep the pins in place that pinches out the extra material that I have in the bust and waist area. And then finally, creating my finished faulenza. Okay, so I think at this point, I'm officially done with the sewing portion of this corset. I know that there are a ton of areas that I could improve, and I'm actually really curious to hear what you all say. Please keep in mind that I'm not a very confident sewer, so please be kind, but I would love to hear any constructive uh, feedback on how I could make this corset better in the future. Like what fit changes should I do or what construction changes should I do in order to make this a better corset or make better corsets going forward. I don't know how long it'll be until I tackle my next one because this was pretty difficult for me. Now I did say that I'm done with the sewing portion of the corset and I am done with the sewing portion but I when I was looking at the picture, I noticed that there was some lace trim around the top and the illustration, and I thought that I had the perfect knitting pattern for this. And once I'm done, I'm gonna add it as an embellishment here. So you'll see it in one of my future videos um, when I actually have this knit lace finished and embellished. I'll leave a link down below. I translated the pattern. It's part of like a set of four patterns as part of my chemise and drawers. So I'll link it down below where you can buy it. I'll link the free resource that I used and translated. So you can also use that one to knit your uh, lace if you want 
want to, you definitely don't have to, but if you become a patron, I actually release that pattern for free on there. So if you become a patron, then you'll also have access to that pattern as part of your patron membership. All of that is completely voluntary. Um, you can just also use the free resource that I used in order to knit this lace pattern as well. I wanna say, as always, thank you so much for your support. This is always so fun to do, and I really look forward to all the comments that I get from everyone after I post from these videos because I just love to see the feedback and I just want to have a community of people that I can talk to and kind of geek out about this because I think in real life it's a little bit difficult to find those people but I feel like I found my crowd. Going forward I'm going to be doing a little less sewing and a little bit more knitting so getting a bit back more to like the roots of what I really enjoy which is historical knitting patterns and I'm going to be doing stockings next. I recently acquired a new to me pair of antique stockings that have a beautiful lace trim at the top and I will be using those as well as some others that I have as a basis for making those stockings and I think this time around I'm actually going to release the pattern for the stockings. I know the last time I created some stockings I had a lot of requests for the pattern. I didn't take the time to translate it at that point because I wasn't doing that then but I think I will take the time to translate it this time so you can also use a free resource that I will be using as a basis plus the images that I have from the antique stockings that I'll be using as kind of the inspiration for my own but I will also then be creating like a full-fledged pattern that you can use to knit your own. So it might take me a little bit longer to come out with that video just because the stockings are in a tiny gauge and it takes quite a while to write up a pattern, but I hope that you guys are looking forward to that and I might release a few other videos in between. So if you have any other ideas for some other things that you'd like to see. So for example, I was thinking about how do you wash items that have knit lace? And honestly, I don't know the answer. So I would really like to explore the option of doing that with you. I also sometimes get questions on um, care for your other woolen sweaters. You spend so much time making them, it would be nice to actually make sure they last as long as possible. Or if there's anything else that you're interested in or you would like to know and you want me to go over, please let me know. I would be happy to do maybe some shorter, quicker videos while I'm working on getting those stockings ready because those stockings are gonna take me quite some time. But anyway, thank you again so much for watching. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you wanna see more historical knitting, sewing, crocheting content. Uh, if you are interested, you can see if you want to support me on Patreon. But again, that's absolutely not required. Just having you here and seeing that you interact and participate is fantastic. So thank you again so much. And I will hopefully see you again really soon.